Good afternoon, Basil Creek members, friends, family. Good afternoon. We're going to get started not too long. I don't want to keep you too long. I know many of us are out and about today. A lot of people are at work, not me, so I'm at work right now, but uh, the word of the Lord must go forward today. So uh, uh, I'm going to give us a few more seconds. We're going to jump straight into it. I'm on my lunch break, so I want to put a little food in my stomach before it's time to go back to work. So uh, we definitely uh, greet you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you for being on with us this uh, afternoon. Uh, like I said, uh, I know many of you are probably out moving and moving around, shopping. Got a day off of work, so you're trying to get in your yard, cutting grass. Make sure your yard is good for Easter. Uh, but we have a we're gonna uh, talk about Jesus today. Yes, that's, that's really what it's all about today. We're gonna talk about Jesus today. This is the reason why we're here. This is the reason why we are. Many people are off today. Is is about Jesus. Uh, crucifixion so uh, I'm gonna jump right in it I'm gonna give us like one minute and we're gonna get into this word and I'm gonna get you out of here so you can get on about your day amen I see some people already jumping on already uh, see Pastor Patterson on here uh, see uh, Deacon Hamilton on here uh, see some more people I know some people already on the conference call as well uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna give us one more minute we're gonna jump straight in this word I don't want to prolong it uh, we just want to jump straight into it. Uh, I think uh, Pastor Patterson is actually in. Um, he's at work as well today. I think that's what he told me. So um, not, everybody's not off today, but some some of you are. So uh, definitely uh, get your rest and uh, enjoy your family. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about it. So we're going to jump straight into it. Um, as you know, this is Good Friday. Many of us, uh, we, we, we celebrate this day This that many people ask, why what's so good about Good Friday? What, what What's so good about this day that that, that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. Uh, so we're going to talk about some things that I, I feel like they're encouraging to all of us because we know that in the midst of his crucifixion, there were some benefits. There were some things that, that, that help us. There are some things that will touch us. There are some things that will motivate us and understand why we celebrate this Easter. Uh, so we're leading up into to, uh, Resurrection Sunday. I know everybody's going out and getting a uh, nice Easter suit and everything and nice dress and all this stuff and getting ready. But, but for a few minutes, I just want to talk about today, Good Friday, Good Friday. Uh, Good Friday started early this morning. Good Friday started with Jesus being on trial around four, uh, between 4 and 8 o'clock. He was already on trial. He was, ar he was already being on trial for, for, for what he had not did, but what people said he had did. Um, and as you know, at 8 o'clock and through 8.30, he carried his cross up this hill called Golgotha to the hill on this hill called Calvary. And at 9 o'clock, he was crucified. And at 9.30, the soldiers divided Jesus' clothing, and he prayed for them. And, and at 9 and 9, 9.30 to 11, the soldiers watched over the crucifixion and mocked Jesus. And he, he said he can't save himself. Come down from there, son of, son of God. And at 11 to noon, Jesus speaks from, from the cross to the thieves on either side. So, so, so right now, at 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock noon, this was the time where, where, where the, the darkness descended upon the land. Darkness came all over the land and and, and, and lands and it stayed dark for three more hours until that until three o'clock when Jesus died. And he said, My God, my God, have have you forsaken me? Jesus said it is finished, and he gave up his spirit. So so right now we're in that time of darkness, in that time of darkness, and in that time of darkness. So for these few minutes, I, I just, you know, I didn't want to preach something that people are gonna be talking about later on. I know there's tons of seven last sayings, uh Ser uh, services tonight that you can jump on to late on this evening but but i just want to come and encourage you and talk to you and, and let's just be a family all together and, and and for a few minutes as you've seen already in the in the in the type line it said my sermon title is simply help me live jesus help me live jesus it, it, it's simple as that help me live jesus our scripture reading uh today in this afternoon it says uh, comes from John, the 12th chapter, the 32nd verse, and it says, And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. I'm going to say that again. And I, if I be lifted up from this earth, I'll draw all men unto me. It's simple as that. We only have one scripture reading. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for your, your, your you giving your son, Father God, to down a cross for all of us and to die for our sins and to die for our shortcomings, Father God. And, and we pray that even in this time on Good Friday that we start to uh, have times of reflection and even until resurrection morning, uh, we're going to continue to think about the goodness of God, thinking about how you loved us so much that you gave your son. God, so uh, 
this little people, um, little less, little words on the page, Father God, do what you want to do with it, Father God. Um, have your way, Father God, because we know that what you direct and how you direct is the main way to go. And Father God, we thank you for that. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. So let's jump into it. So, so, so as we talk about, as we talk about, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men. That 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 right there is just enough. You you can really stop there and stop it. If I if I be lifted up from the earth, as we know, we see concerts, we see all these different things where people are put on high pedestals so people can pay attention to them. We 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 raise placards on poles in crowded settings, helping people to know where to go, like name cards. We help chauffeurs hold up signs at the airport to say. You are an important person and you need to come this way. We, we have flags and place setters during marathons to hold up to say, look, you're running the right way. We have military standards raised on battlefields that gather soldiers. In this same way, Jesus' work on the cross is a visible cue that draws people to him. He said, and if I be lifted up, that means Christ being lifted up made sure that he was the center of attention. Now, now, let's, now let's, let's look at this because there were so many people watching him. And there was so much going on. People were crying. People were doing all this stuff. People were laughing, mocking him and doing all this stuff. But at the end of the day, he was sitting on that on the Calvary and sitting up high because he was the center of attention. There were so many people as we look in the and we look in the gospels, we find out that, you know, Mary, Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James um, in Luke. It records that the Roman soldiers were there. Um, and then we even see that all the rest of the disciples are gone, uh, except, except for that one disciple that he loved so much. And of course, in the crowd, there were chief priests, there were scribes, there were elders, there were the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. All these people fit, were fixated and had their attention on Jesus. That's amazing because they thought that they were that they thought that what they were doing was was doing the worst to them, but honestly, it was doing the best for them because they were putting all their attention on him. So so Christ lifted it, it this what what does it mean to us? Christ lifted meets one of our greatest needs that was that we needed a savior. And if we would have needed wisdom, God would have called a philosopher. If we needed, if we needed money, he would have called an economic somebody who did it with money. If we needed all this other stuff, he would have called this. But God said we needed a savior because we needed salvation, and God sent us a savior. See, Christianity is uh, other than often we're the only one that offers salvation. Other religions offer wisdom. They offer enlightenment. They offer all these other things, but they don't offer salvation. So Jesus lifted on the cross became sin for us who he not even didn't even know sin himself. So he offered himself on a cross to draw us from the curse of the law, thus becoming a curse for us. For the word of the Lord says, cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. So for himself on that cross, he drew the curse from us and he became the curse for us. See, see, we don't want to talk. We're going to continue talking about lifting him up. But I want to draw attention to this simple thing that preaching of the cross is necessary because it teaches us about the drawing power of God. The drawing is God's love for people. This is saying that God's lifted up on the cross was a magnet for all of us. Let me put a disclaimer out there in this message. That, that does not mean that this meant that there was a universal salvation or to say that everybody would be saved. But it, it is to teach us that there is no distinction for who can be saved because he said, I will draw all men unto me. See, John, John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave us only God, God, his son. And whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He sends his son to earth in, form, in human form to die on a lifted cross to draw all men, women, children, drunks, drug dealers, gang bangers, liars, cheaters, fornicators, rich people, poor people, all people to him. So the text says, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. See, the lifted Christ started to draw men instantly because in the, in the gospel of according to Luke, in the 23rd chapter around the verse 39, we find out that Jesus was stuck between two thieves on the cross. See, see Jesus was lifted up, but he was put between two thieves. These were two low-down criminals that, had, that had, had committed a crime, one on the right and one on the left. And, and, he, and one of the men said, 
uh, one of the dying men that said he's dying in sin said, Jesus, if you be Christ, save yourself and also save us. See, he was, if you are a man, if you're the man you say you are yourself, save yourself and save me also. But the thief on the other side said, is dying to sin and recognized that the man in the middle is dying for sin. So he rebuked the partner in crime on the other side, telling him, don't you even, do you not even fear God, even with you dying on this cross? This man had done nothing in the, in the, nothing in the midst, but we are here because we deserve it. He said, look, this man didn't do nothing in the middle, but, but both of us, we deserved it. See, this man is a thief that, that had, had not been to church. He hadn't paid no tithes, no offerings. He, he hadn't been to a prayer meeting. He hadn't been he hadn't been to vacation Bible school. He hadn't been to revival. He, he, he didn't even know not one scripture. But he knew there was something good about that man. So he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into the kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Can I help somebody this afternoon? Let them let and let them know that you that that a lifted Christ on a cross will draw you even when you don't have it all together. See, 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 I'm gonna say that again. A lifted Christ will draw you even when you don't have it all together. See, 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 all of the other religions in the world say you, you have to get yourself together, you have to get yourself right, and then come meet us, and we'll make you a part of our, our part of our religion. But 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 you, you have to do something to be a part of us. Once you get yourself together, come on back and talk to us. Once you pick yourself up, once you clean yourself up, can you, can, you can get yourself together, come join us. See, the great thing about Jesus is he doesn't wait until you get yourself together. When you're in the ditch, he said, I'll meet you in the ditch and I'll pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on God's solid ground. The lifted Jesus died not for good men, not for a righteous woman, but he died for some sinners like you and like me. See, the lifted Jesus might not mean much to you if you ain't seeing too much. But 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 I, I, I can shout. I, you can't shout much when you ain't seeing much. But some of us have some skeletons in our closet. Some of us have some words that we wish we would not have spoken. Some of us have some conversations that we wish we had not had. Some of us have been some places we should have not been. But can I help somebody? We even though all of that, he still says, I will take you just as you are. He says, if I be lifted up, I will draw you even when you are mess. I will lift you. If when I'm lifted up, I will draw you even when you ain't got it all together. If I will lift it up on the cross, I don't care how you get just coming to me. So so salvation is not what God delivered. Another thing is salvation is not what God delivered you from, but it also is what God keeps you from. See, see, see. See, some of us ain't never been on drugs. Some of us ain't never been to jail. Some of us never been drunk. Some of us never have been evicted, but God kept us from those things. But salvation is not what he delivered you from, but it's what he's keeping you from getting involved in. The only reason you're still here is not because of the good you did last week or the good you did this week, but it's but many of us, it's, the, it's because the God in us kept the wrath off of our life from coming down on us. See, 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 that's the thing about it. See, he, he, he doesn't, he's saying that, you know, I kept you from those things. Yeah, <laughs> you could have been out in the street, but I kept you from even getting to that point. So once he drawed you in there, then there should be a sense of worship in you. See, see, here it is. He had all these people around the cross and nobody worshiped at the cross, but a thief on, on the cross right beside him. See, thank God, I'm gonna go ahead and be honest here. I'm a, I'm a thief just like that man hanging on that cross. I don't have it all together. I did a lot of sinning. I did stuff that I've, I've been ashamed of. But guess what? God says still, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Now, now see, so I thank God that some of these other crooks like you and me got it. See, I need to talk to somebody that knows that you needed to be in jail and, and, you, and you needed to be go to hell, but God rescued you. If, if you would have been caught and you would have got killed on that cross just like that thief, but Jesus rescued you just so he can say that you are my child. See, Lord, I know I don't deserve it. <laughs> I know I'm not worthy of it. I know you ought to punish me, but remember me in paradise is what that thief said. One of the, one of the songs of old says, will the Lord remember me when I'm called to go? 
when I have crossed death's chilly sea, will he his love there show? Oh, yes, he hears my feeble cries. From bondage set me free. And when I reach those pearly gates, he will remember me. Is there anybody he that has feel like and knows they're just like that thief? And all we're asking is, God, remember me in paradise. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today shall, shall thou be with me in paradise. Then Jesus was lifted. Then also, we got the thief. But it was interesting that the thief was not the only one actually that got it. Because further along, you look in the scriptures, it says that a Roman soldier who should have been in opposition says that this must be surely, this must be the son of God. Because he was lifted up and on display for that soldier to see. So, so, so God was making a statement that no matter what you've done, <laughs> I still love you. He made a statement at the cross and that no matter what you did, no matter how low you've been, no matter how much you've sinned, no matter how dirty you are, you can still get salvation because he was lifted on the cross. See, the only see, there is only one way to God. And we must understand. I heard people say there's multiple ways to get to God. But as we know in the scripture, there's only one way to get to God through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you come in any other way, the Bible says that you're a thief or a robber. See here, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. See, in the Old Testament, as we see uh, before, before this time, the Old Testament, they, they had the blood of animals, the blood of that were sacrificed by the priest 24 hours a day on the altar for the people, of, for the sins of the people. Around the clock, they were making sacrifices for the sins of the people. But the thing you have to understand about the Old Testament when it comes to the sacrificing of those animals is, it covered their sins, but it did not take it away. I'm going to say that again. It covered their sins for a little while, but it did not take their sins away. But the but on the Day of Atonement, the priest would put on his ceremonial ephod and, and put a rope around his waist, and he would go behind the veil that separated the holies of holies from the most holy and made a sacrifice for the people so that if he dropped dead, Behind the veil, that rope that he had tied around the waist, they could pull him out because nobody was allowed behind the veil but the high priest, and he and he could not he could only be the one there on the day of atonement. But when Jesus was lifted up on the cross and died, the Bible declares that the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom, taking the middle man out from between God and His people. So now we don't need no high priest because we've already got one in the, per, in the person of Jesus Christ. Not to cover our sins, but to wash our sins away. Thank God that the sins I've committed are a, just a stain in my life and not a tattoo on my life. Not because he died. He died on this day called Good Friday. So when he died, my sins were washed away because he died. Every sin I committed, he washed in the blood, every sin of omission and commission, he took care of it on the cross. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So I just stopped by to let you know that the blood that was shed on the cross is still washing you white as snow in 2022. The blood that ran down from his head and his hands is still working in 2022. And it's the same blood as working over 2,000 years ago. I told you at the beginning of the message that, I, that, 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 that in, the, uh, in the beginning of the message, I wanted to share with you that I, it was a song that, that, uh, that uh, Sister Cynthia Hicks used to sing. And, and, and it used to stir him up in my soul. And it, it used to say, how to reach the masses. And she used to start a little quiet and she, when she first started. And she used to start, start like she didn't even want to sing it. And she said, how to reach the masses. Men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I... If I be lifted up from this earth, will draw all men unto me. And she went on to say, lift them up, lift them up. And still in the, in, the, in the old song says, lift them up and speaks from the eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. But it was something about that song that stuck out to me when the choir started rocking. I'm talking about before when the churches get rebuilt and, and we didn't even have carpet on the floor. And when they used to sing that song, when when, uh, when uh, David Davis used to be on the organ, Mr. David Davis used to be on the organ, and she started singing that song, it was something that she said that stuck out to me. And she would call out to the choir, say, would you help me lift up Jesus? 
Then she said, deacons, will you help me lift up Jesus? Then she said, ushers, will you help me lift up Jesus? Now, as a child, I didn't understand what it meant to help me lift up Jesus because I thought I needed to lift Jesus. But God said, I already did that. That, but a few of us understand that. So when the leader said, help me live Jesus, all they trying to do is saying, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Tell him thank you for dying for your sins on a hill called Calvary. Tell him thank you for taking me just as I am. Thank you for being what I need you to be and save me from what I didn't need to be. Thank you for being my doctor in the, in the, in the hospital. Thank you for being my lawyer in, in, in the courtroom. Thank you for keeping me in my right mind. Thank you for keeping that car from hitting me. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have been doomed for damnation. But because of his grace and his mercy that kept me and his blood covered me, I could tell him thank you. Thank you on those good days. Thank you in the bad days. Thank you when I got money. Thank you when I don't have money. Thank you when I'm broke because there's something about the name of Jesus that when you say it, demons tribble. That's why I love him in Vacation Bible School. We learned a song that said, there is a, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. And then it goes down and says, because, his first love, because he first loved me, it tells me of my Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect pleas. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. So if we lift Jesus up and thanking him for all he did, he will do the drawing. Just as we saw that thief and that soldier in the midst of his crucifixion. So that's what Good Friday is all about. Because he died. Didn't he die? He died one Friday on a hill called Calvary. Now we know on Sunday <laughs> he's gonna something's gonna happen to him. So he had a setup on Friday. But guess what? Pastor Patterson and, and, and early morning services, they're going to give you the comeback for what, what the setup was on Friday. So may, may God be with you. And remember that if we lift him up, he'll do the drawing. We don't have to do that. So we just keep lifting him up because he died. He died one day on Friday. And as, you, and as we uh, get off this call, I want you to remember, and, and over until Sunday, I want you to take some time out, especially on Saturday. Saturday is often called Silent Saturday. Take some time out to just stop what you're doing, cut off your phones, cut, cut, cut off everything else, and just think about and reflect on everything that Jesus did on his cross and how he went down on Friday and died. And they put him in the tomb. But guess what? <laughs> On Sunday, we're going to find out what that comeback is. And we're thankful for that comeback. So remember that God loved us so much that he gave us only God his son. That he put him on the cross and lifted him up so he can take the sins of all of us and draw all men, no matter your color, your creed, your, your sexual orientation, no matter any of that stuff, he draws all men unto him. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this preach word. We thank you for this time of reflection. We thank you for this time of fellowship, God. God, we know that you are amazing, God. You, you sent your son down to cover us and, and wash all our sins away. And we thank you for that because we know without, without him and without, without that sacrifice, we cannot live the life we live. We cannot live this Christian life. We would not have a faith to stand on, God. So we thank you, God. Now, Father God, we know even in the midst of this Good Friday and everything else, we have so many families who are dealing with death. We have so many families who are dealing with sickness, Father God. So, Father God, even in the midst, just like Jesus on that cross, we know you can still touch somebody at the same time as all this other stuff is going on, God. God, continue to keep our, keep us healthy, Father God. Continue to keep our church healthy, Father God. Continue to lift our leaders up, God. Continue to do what you want to do, God. Because we know if we keep lifting them up, God is going to do the drawing. So, Father God, we thank you and we love you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. As we leave this place, remember there's nothing today 
that's going to happen that God cannot handle together. I'm going to say that again, and you need to carry that along your day. There's nothing today that's going to happen that you and God cannot handle together. God bless you, church family, friends, and everybody on the call. Uh, we, we pray God's blessings upon you, and we'll see you on Sunday for the comeback. God bless you.